What's up guys? MMA Flicks and Chill, this is Chris. And I haven't done a video in a while, but the John Jones thing, I just, I have to talk to you about the John Jones thing. Because most people, most professionals, people, fighters, they, they in the MMA community, there's this dark cloud over John Jones' head. And I think it's interesting because I think it's true, but I also think he's misunderstood. And the general concept that I'm seeing, the general consensus is that John Jones, like the purists are like, John Jones is a cheater. PEDs, he's a cheater. And he's a screw up, you know, hitting people with his car, drunk driving, this, that, you know. But I think that John Jones has got to be the most interesting, one of the most interesting, at least in the top three, most interesting fighters and definitely the most interesting champion that we've ever seen in the UFC. He may even be the longest reigning. Has anybody reigned longer than him? I know he got, he took the light heavyweight championship belt from Rua and he had it ever since until he vacated it. One of the things that I found interesting about John Jones is his willingness to actually try to make things unpleasant and painful on his opponents. Now, a lot of these guys, they come in, you know, there's all different levels of sportsmanship, right? These guys don't want to end each other's careers. You know, most of them are nice guys. John Jones is looked at as somebody who pretends to be nice, but he's a bad person. And I think that to a certain extent of that could be true, but it, I don't know if it is anymore. And I'll tell you why. First off, everybody's human. Everybody's human. We all make mistakes. We all do selfish things. We all do stupid things, younger, you know, hopefully younger. We make our mistakes younger, mature, figure out this isn't the right thing to do. Sure, John Jones has made the same mistakes a few times, which would have some people frustrated and saying he needs to grow up, he needs to get his stuff together, and he needs to just focus on the talent that he has. All we see from the promotions, all we see of each one of these fighters is what the media leaks to us, what they choose to show us, the fighters, and what the promotion UFC shows us and chooses to show us. So we don't know these people. Now, we can get an idea of what kind of person somebody is just from listening to them talk. And John Jones is always like the the nice, super happy, positive guy, you know? And I think part of that is him. I think that is him. I do, I mean, I do think there's some stuff going on in here and we'll get into that too. But for the most part, I mean, not for the most part, but I do believe that the nice John Jones that he shows us is partly him. I don't think it's all an act. And this last press conference was very telling because I went back and watched all of his fights and you could see him do things on purpose to specifically hurt somebody. One of the things that kind of made me feel like the rumors are true of him being like a sociopath is after his fights, he looked like he had zero emotion. He just looked like, okay, I got through that. Like he looked relieved. But he never like celebrated, he never got a, I'm not going to say never because I've I seen a clip where maybe he was getting emotional. But for the most, actually, if there's a part, if there's a scene or a fight where he's getting emotional, I would like to see it. So put the link in the description if you know of a, a time John Jones got emotional. But for the most part, most of what I've seen, he shows zero emotion. And the facial exp expressions he does, I'm going to go ahead and give you my breakdown of John Jones from what I've seen. So let's just talk about his last 
press conference. He came in super smiley, joking around like, hey guys, you know. He kind of came in with, um, it felt very Carlton from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, you know. Like, hey guys, there you are. Hey, where are you from? London? All right. He actually said that. Uh, but here's the thing. Now, when you're doing things like that, when somebody does something like that, that's usually not their real personality, which means John is hiding something from us. And I think that's what creeps everybody out. He, he's definitely hiding something from us. And in his life, separate from what we see, from what he shows us, we see not great things. <clears throat> but out of, what is it, the 15 years that John Jones has been, you know, in MMA, kind of in the public's eye, there's, you know, you can count pretty much on one hand the screw-ups, right? But the more famous you are, the more you're looked at under a microscope, and everything that happens to you in your life can be magnified. And if that's all people are talking about in your life, they're not talking about when you go do charity or when you, you know, helped your sick mom or your friend's sick mom's family and stuff like that. They're not advertising that. They're advertising when you party too hard, get drunk and get into an accident, which I understand. That's... <laughs> I've never been in that situation because I know better. So yes, he should know better and he should be punished for his wrongdoings. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying he shouldn't be punished for his wrongdoings and we should just ignore that. What I'm saying is John Jones is a lot deeper than what I think most people's reads on him are. Uh, I do believe that there's level, there's a spectrum of all different kinds of I don't want to necessarily call them mental illnesses, but like mental um, understandings that we all have individually. Like our perspective, men, our, our, our perspective on life. Like some people are carefree. They don't think of the consequences. They just go and, and do it. Or, and, and that doesn't even define someone as a person itself. If, if you throw caution to the wind when you party and stuff and you're just having a good time and it's your time to set your mind free, that doesn't mean you can't be disciplined at work, you know, or at home or your physical fitness because he's definitely disciplined, right? So there's, there's different kinds of people. Some throw caution to the wind with their whole life, you know, not smart. But some people do. A lot of people do. And then some people have everything calculated. And like Colby Covington, he's showing you what he thinks will do the best for his brand and the organization. You don't know Colby Covington. I don't know Colby Covington. Unless you're hanging out with Colby Covington every day, you don't know Colby Covington. You know, so like, I mean, look at all the people that thinks he's a douchebag, right? Just because of what he shows us. But he's a, he's a heel. That's what he's doing. We all know that. So John Jones is no different. He only shows us who he wants us to see. And that's why a lot of people are turned off by him. Because he shows us, hey guys, this nice guy pos full of positivity. And then we're seeing all this negative stuff in the news. That's not what intrigues me about John Jones. What intrigues me is I believe that he's a special kind, he's a special artist with combat sports. I believe that he's coming up with strategies and game plans that are entertaining to him. And I think he's able to think levels above most other fighters. And with all this stuff going around about John Jones being bored in his last two fights and kind of just going through the motions, like, I hear a lot of criticism on that. Like, yeah, right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, MMA guru. He was like, mm -hmm, sure. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Your last two fights, you just didn't care. But the thing about it is he doesn't know John Jones. I don't know John Jones either, but let me submit this to you. Everybody is different. 
like I said, you could throw caution to the wind with some things and then be disciplined with other things, you know? So depending on the state of mind you're in, you know, he could also have depression. And when you're depressed, you don't care about a lot of stuff and you will just go through the motions. But I believe John Jones is so talented and so creative and so many levels ahead. And when I say levels, I don't just mean his fight IQ. That's immeasurable anyway. That's like trying to measure creativity. It's like trying to measure an artist's creativity. It's just not something you can really measure. It's not something we know how to measure. So I think that creativity, I actually, I think Albert Einstein said it. He said something like creativity is better than talent. Because I think John Jones is talented, athletic, and creative. And this is not something I've heard anybody talk about. Here's the dark side of John Jones that I've seen. I want to talk about the good things and I want to talk about the bad, dark things. The good things, let's talk about the dark things first. So I went back and I started watching all of John Jones fights again, just because this big one's coming up. We haven't seen him in three years. It's like catching up on an episode. Let me see where you're at. Let me see what you've done. So I went back and watched them all from the beginning up to where he is now. And there's some good videos on YouTube. Some other YouTubers have uh, edited down some like highlights and stuff like that to kind of just get you caught up. So um, I will look for the links that I actually watch and I'll put them in my link. If you like this content, by the way, please subscribe and co like comment, just say hi. It helps the algorithms. You guys know the drill, you watch other YouTubers, so just show me the same love you show other other YouTubers you like and help me out. Help me grow this channel. I hear it's hardest to reach a thousand. I'm like at 400 and something. You could help me get to a thousand by just subscribing right now. And that would be most appreciated. And as soon as I get to a thousand, I'll start creating more content, go live. We'll hang out during UFC fight nights and pay-per-views and stuff like that. So, okay, so let's get into the dark side of John and the light side of the good side of John. I don't know if there's a light side. Yeah, there's a light side. We'll get into it. Okay, so the dark side of him that I was seeing from his fights is his willingness to hurt people. And it's almost like he feels like he wants that. It's like maybe that's the dark side of Jones. He, he likes that power over other people. And from that per and because he's intelligent and he's creative, he prepares to fight them to where he can completely have his way with them and they have no power, which is a, a dark, creepy thing to think about, but it's also the most beautiful thing you could have in combat sports. You, you with me on that? Like in combat sports, do you want a passive, oh, I'm just here for fun, you know, guy in a fight? Or do you want to have a guy that's in there like, I'm a lion and I'm going to eat you? I'm going to, I'm going to make you look like you don't belong in here with me. Now, I know fighters have that beast savage mentality, right? But here's what separates John Jones. Something he said in his last, in the press con, in the, in the post- fight pre in the pre-fight press conference is well it was it was in the in the embedded or something it was in one of the promos he said i'm being uncomfortable now so i can make my opponent uncomfortable in the fight i was like whoa okay i get it now i get it John, and I've never heard another fighter say this before. I've heard about like working on your endurance and stuff like that. Working on your stamina so you can last all the rounds, right? But John Jones is like, yeah, he just casually says it too. Which, if you really listen to some of the things he's saying, it's deep. It's deep and telling. It tells us a lot about him. He said... We're making ourselves uncomfortable now 
So in the fight, we can make him uncomfortable, more uncomfortable. I may be getting the quote a little wrong, but the point is, he's prepared, he's like, he's making, getting himself used to suffering. Maybe that's the word he used. We, I'm suffering now. So I suffer less in the fight or so I can make them suffer more in the fight. It's something like that. Look it up. Look it up. Comment below and tell me, you know, remind me what it is. But it's something like that. And the point that I realized was John Jones is like he's putting himself in horrible, insufferable um, environments and situations leading up to the fight. So no matter what Cyril Gaon does, if it turns into a dog fight, which we'll get into what kind of dog he is too. So if they get into a dog fight, John Jones has already been uncomfortable for a week and he's embraced it and, and he, he fights through it. So it's like working on a muscle. If you keep working on the muscle, that muscle is gonna get stronger. It's gonna get stronger, no matter what it is. It's like when you're gonna give a speech you give the speech out loud over and over and over and over, so it's like second nature. Um, when you're running a marathon, you run laps and laps and laps and laps and laps. So it's building up your stamina, you're building up your muscle, your muscle memory, all the muscles. So it's just second nature. Well, he's taking training to a different level because it mentally, it, what he's doing is he's preparing himself mentally, like his heart. His, his men mentality, like his threshold of being broken. Think about that. I don't know how many of you have ever spent time in an octagon, a ring, a cage, whatever, but I'll tell you this. I have, I, I used to do tournaments in kickboxing when I was a kid and now I'm doing boxing. So I started boxing in, you know, uh, older like I'm not a kid anymore and I'll tell you this like one round and I can bear I can barely catch my breath right because I don't do it all the time so these fighters that are training all the time they're getting their stamina up so one of the first battles they have is just being able to freaking keep their breath during a fight during the whole first round to however many rounds the fight is. So that's part of the first battle. So all these fighters that are going against each other, that is one battle that they have to accomplish to begin with. So just the fact that they're not giving up halfway through the fights shows that the level and profession, the professionalism of these fighters. But John Jones doesn't settle for that like other fighters. Other fighters, they like, that's their goal to get stamina, maybe have more stamina than the other guy. John Jones is going beyond that. He's testing himself to see where his breaking points are before the fight and bringing himself to that threshold over and over and over and over and over and just getting that threshold higher and higher. That's an awareness that comes through creativity. I don't know if anybody taught him that or told him that. And he has a bunch of these weird things that he does like that that makes him special. One of the things is that, that mentality. Let's talk about his willingness to hurt people. This is where the dark side of John Jones is. Where he gets pleasure from just eviscerating his opponents. And I don't remember, I don't remember the who's who. Like I said, I just watched all of his fights over again to catch up from beginning to now. I didn't take notes of any of them. I just made some, uh, I just remember some memorable moments in watching that that I wanted to tell you about. One of the memorable moments is he's on top of one of the guys, right? And he has his elbow. He First, he has his arm on the neck of the dude and he's just putting all this weight on it and he's moving it. So it's not just pressure here, but it's like a sawing, like, grinding pressure on the neck now we see that here and there 
in UFC fights, but it's it's not as sinister as when John Jones does it. John Jones does it with a malicious intent. When Dustin Poirier does it, he's he's in a fight and he's being gritty and mean. But it's not the same. Dustin Poirier, I'm sure, ha, you know, like realizes this guy has a family. You know, we're, and I know some of you are going to disagree with me, but you're wrong because I know professional fighters. I talk with them all the time. We get into deep conversations like this, and I guarantee you, a lot of them will be careful of each other. Uh, they won't take some risks to permanently harm each other. And, and a good example of that is Habib's fight with um, Justin Gaethje. He chose not to break his arm or his leg or his knee or whatever. Um, he decided not to give him permanent damage that would hurt his career and hurt him permanently. He chose to choke him out instead. And that's what I'm talking about. That's there's that's that's an extreme example that we saw of this mentality that I'm explaining to you. John Jones doesn't give a he doesn't give a crap, right? He doesn't. He doesn't care if he caves your knee in. Oh, that's another one I would seem to the drop leg kick into the knee. That's just dirty. And you know what? There's several fighters that talk about how dirty of a fighter he is. Now, when we think of dirty fighter, that puts some images into our mind. And this is where why I've decided to make the video, because these images that we get into our mind, a lot of humans have the tendency to parrot what they heard. And that's only natural. Uh, it's, not, it's not tearing them down or anything. But... They parrot things they hear. They hear another perspective. They'll parrot some of that. They hear this one. They choose which one that they want to parrot, and then they parrot it. And I'm assuming you know what I mean by that, by parroting. You hear someone say something, so now that's what you believe, and that's what you're going to preach. But I haven't heard anybody talk about this yet, so we're going to talk about it. The fact that he doesn't care if he permanently harms his opponent or not, kind of shows, okay, that opens up a, a few doors. It, first, up, it opens up some narcissism. And we're going to get to the light sides of John Jones too. And just a little uh, prequel to that. Uh, prequel? That word sounds weird. Prequel. Like a prequel. Uh, to that is that John Jones is human, you know what I mean? And we like dehuman, we dehumanize people. Let me go back to the imagery that I was talking. When we start hearing this imagery of like, he fights dirty, he grinds into people, he's trying to hurt them. When you hear someone fights dirty, you're thinking of John Jones fighting dirty, right? And then you have all that PED got popped for steroids and cheating and stuff like that. So now we're, we're associating him being a cheater, a steroid cheat, with fighting dirty, dirty equals cheat. Why wouldn't he? He's trying to get away with as much illegal stuff as he possibly can to win the fight. I don't think that's necessarily what's going on here. I think that he has a mentality where, like I was saying at the beginning earlier in the video, that he likes to have absolute power over somebody. And this is his way that he can do it in front of the world, which is fantastic to watch from a from a, um, a viewer standpoint. Not so much the fighter fighting him. So there is a scariness to John Jones too, and the fact that everybody thinks that he's a sociopath, which I do think that there's a good amount of that. He is a narcissist. There's a good amount of that, um, and he's old enough to wear. <laughs> It's kind of part of him now, you know. Here's here's where I think John Jones is right now in his life. He's all about like he talks about Jesus a lot. And he talks about having faith in the Lord. 
I think John Jones is, and I know he's mentioned it before in the past, but he is getting to the point to where he's mentally starting to mature a little bit. And I'm not saying, and he even said himself, like in his pre-fight interview, this last press conference leading up to his fight with uh, Serial Gains, Serial Gun, um, he's mentioned all this. Like, okay, one of the reporters said, they brought up like that, like him hitting his wife and stuff like that. Do you want to comment on that? And he's like, next question. What were you going to say, ma'am? And then she asked a question, like, what, what is your goals? What is your mission? What is your motivation? And he turned her question into a message to the other person that asked about his past. And he basically broke it down saying, I'm human. I make mistakes. We all make mistakes. I'm always going to try to do better. I'm always going to try to be a better person. I may make I may make more mistakes in the future, but I will keep trying to be a better person, and that's all I can do. And I'm going to put my faith in Jesus' hands, my faith in Jesus, and I'm going to let him lead me. Now, I think he was being honest there. I really think in this post, in this, I keep wanting to call it a post-fight com press conference, but in this pre-fight press conference, I really think he was telling the truth in these interviews. And I think that he's maturing. I do think that, you know, like there's that thing in him where he will always, I mean, look, look how long it took Mike Tyson to stop making mistakes like this and to be like, have a functional positive uh, impression on society or in the combat sports community. I mean, everybody wanted to watch him fight, but nobody respected him or liked him. And that's how John Jones is. He's kind of like our modern day Mike Tyson in that re regard, you know? He's he's a GOAT. He's the best. And, and that's another thing. People that don't give him credit for being the GOAT, you're... You're just way off. Way off. Oh, but he he did steroids. Yeah, but they just changed the rules. So now, if that was now, no, he didn't. Not enough to talk about it. So let's not talk about it. I'm kind of on board with taking away his, uh, his um, disqualification, his loss. His loss. Because if you saw that fight, you know he didn't lose it. And, um, wait, I'm talking about two different things. <laughs> uh, he did get disqualified from an elbow down. I guess that should stay, but his, um, no contest from PED that, yeah, should be removed. But anyway, I think we should stop. I think we should drop that subject now that the, the rules have changed. It's not relevant anymore. So using that is an argument on why to discredit his accomplishments is a weak. I think it's weak. It's it's a weak debate. Now, now it is. So I just think John's the goat, man. Like, I his creativity, like the way he goes about his fights. I think he plans every one. He, he said that he watches Cyril Gaon's fights every night before he goes to bed, every night. And he broke down why, he broke down exactly why he thinks Cyril Gaon's not on his level and he's gonna make it look easy. I mean, he said, I saw a tired Francis Ngannou who was too tired to even do anything offensive lay on top of him and he had no answer for Francis Ngannou laying on top of him, tired. So I don't, I, I'm not gonna let a guy like this ever beat me. I don't see a guy like this ever beating me. And that's because John Jones is training, his mindset's just a different level. He's a talented fighter. He's a seasoned veteran. He's been in there and done all the tricks. He's felt the octagon in the fight world enough 
to know what he has to do to win. And I think that that's why his confidence level is so high, because he's willing to make himself suffer enough to be confident, have a real, genuine confidence going into his fights. And that's why he wins them, because he's also creative. Wherever the fight goes, John Jones has a natural, very quick response time. He's just a very athletic person. And he's very smart and calculated. I believe that John Jones is probably the best chess player in the UFC right now. And has been for a long while. We just haven't seen it. And I do believe he was getting bored in the light heavyweight division, along with going through some personal stuff. I think that uh, he was throwing caution to the wind and with certain things. And even then, he was still be he was still able to win, to pull off the win. You know, let's give the guy credit. Everybody says that oh, he lost to Guffiston one time and he lost to the Rays. Did he? Because if he lost, wouldn't he have lost? The fight was close enough for the judges to be like, I think John Jones won. So you like the people that give. Uh, here here's something else, and I'll give you this. Like when Volkanovski and Islam fought, I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, Volkanovski just beat Islam, and then they announced Islam, and I went online and looked, and everybody else thought that Volkanovski beat Islam too, except for the, um, you know, Habib fans and stuff like that, uh, which I love those guys too, but you know, like they are very one-sided when it comes to their fighters, and they should be. It's a sport. Vote for your team. But, um, like, I saw that, and I was like, wait a minute. I just saw that fight. How did Islam win, right? And I know that this is going to get us on a whole nother topic, but I'm relating it to, I have to accept that Islam won because the judges said he won. And so that's what the, the books say. The books say he won. So, okay, he won. Let's move on. So that's what I'm saying. Like with John Jones, stop saying Ray's one. Stop saying Guffs, Guffs, Guffison. Guffstis? I can't say his name right now. You know who I'm talking about. Guffison. Won. No, he didn't. If he won, he would have won. But he lost. The judges said he lost. He lost. It's in the books. Move on. So yeah, that's my rundown on John Jones. I think that... Uh, Oh, you wanted me to talk about the bright side of John Jones? The bright side of John Jones is we get to watch a, an amazing fighter that has a. He said it in the post pre fight press conference. Um, he has a dog in him, a lion, a vicious lion um, that is just a vicious lion that'll tear people apart. And I think that says everything we need to know about him. When he's in the cage, he doesn't, a lion, when, when he's attacking you, doesn't care if he kills you. And would have no real regrets. I mean, we, I'm sure if no, like, John Jones killed somebody in the, uh, in the octagon, he would think it's badass. And until, this is what would happen with John Jones, though. Here's my read on John Jones. He would have no regrets. He could sleep fine, wake up the next day, not even think about it that much. Be like, oh, damn, that, that was crazy. But it wouldn't hurt him emotionally. Until everybody was like, that piece of shit doesn't even care. Because, of course, John Jones would go online and be like, why are all you saying all this? Like, uh... You know, people would be talking shit and he'd be like, you know, I, I didn't break any rules. Everybody said I didn't break the rules. You know, if I broke the rules or did anything wrong, I'd be in jail. You know, he'd say something like that. And then he would, to defend himself. And then he would say, I, you know, I'm very sorry for the family. He would say all the stuff, you know, all the proper stuff that he needs to say. But I think deep inside John Jones, like that part, like the actual doing it wouldn't bother him as much as what people are saying about him would bother him. So I believe he would come out and say like how bad he felt after people really started putting pressure on him. And because he likes to maintain this nice, he wants us to see this nice guy thing. 
So the bright side, uh, the, the light side of John, the, I guess it's not a light side, but the, if we're doing pros and cons and light and dark, the part that I think is awesome is that you have a savage gladiator that doesn't give a fuck. And I think it's scary for the other opponents actually to go in with somebody like that. But the rules are the rules and they know what they're getting into and they sign up. They sign that dotted line and it it is what it is. Like you're allowed to do whatever you, you can and whatever you want within the rules you're given. So... I just that side that side makes him a spectacle so every one of his fights i'm not saying i like that about him i'm just saying that it makes him a spectacle and it makes his fights and him as a person very interesting to observe as a viewer and as a combat sport fan my one of my uh, professional mma fighter friends his name is eric came over um to watch the last card and um I w he said something negative about John Jones, and I was like, "You don't, you don't like John Jones," and he was like, "He's a piece of shit." I was like, "Yeah, that's why I like him. That's why I want to watch him." And he was like, "Oh yeah, well if you put it that way, because he understood like yeah, if, like it's like WWE or WWF. I don't know which one it is right now. I don't even watch wrestling, but but it's like that. It's um." You know, we're following narratives. We're following storylines. Whether we agree with them or not, we're entertained by it. You, you know what I mean? But I think some people get a little carried away with like, uh, you know, who should and shouldn't, and who's deserving and not deserving. You know who gets to be the judge of who deserves what? The judges. And... Yeah, it's fun going back and forth and stuff like that. But I see John Jones getting a lot of hate and stuff like that, disrespect. But on the other side of it, he's a very fascinating, complex individual that, that you just don't want to miss his fight. You know what I mean? No matter what kind of person he is in here. And I do believe he's maturing. And I do believe he's starting to kind of like get a grasp on empathy. You know? Because it's, it's like a lot of things. With As we mature, we get new perspectives that we didn't think about before. We feel things that we haven't felt before. And sociopaths aren't just people who can't feel anything. They are people that have less amounts of empathy than an average person. And then there's levels of it. Like somebody who, you know, like on a scale of one to one to ten, they don't feel anything as one, they feel everything as ten. There's a spectrum. We don't know what spectrum John Jones is on the on the sociopath part, but we know it's in there. But that doesn't mean he can't feel things. It doesn't mean that he's an ultimate sociopath that cares about nothing other than himself, although it could be. But I do think that he I do feel like I need to defend him a little bit. Just a little bit. And because there's nobody doing it. I know it's an unpopular opinion to defend John Jones, but he's a human. And, and check this out. This is this is the biggest reason I'm defending him. He's a human. We're all humans. So do you want an allotment of mistakes in your life before everybody just assumes you're a piece of shit because they saw one little glimpse of a piece of you because if you don't like that if you would not like that then you, you can't hold other people to it you know what i mean like sure like i'm talking i'm not talking about people in your life like let's keep toxic people around us because they're humans too i'm not talking like that like don't misunderstand me on that what i'm saying is before becoming so superior and critical of somebody that you're entertained watching and before you discredit and disrespect somebody like take into account they're you know like am i being fair here or am i just parroting 
what everybody else says. Anyway, if you like the content, like, subscribe, ring that bell, comment down below. Tell me what you think. Love you guys. Next time soon.